Hello and welcome to our chapel for Friday, April 9th. Let's rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, as is our tradition, we will acknowledge some birthdays. A little bird told me that I actually missed a birthday from our last list, so I apologize for that. On the 26th, which was last Friday, first grader Jack Guild. Happy birthday, Jack. Now, starting back to today, the 9th of April, we have two birthdays. Fifth grader Lucia Eilberg. Happy birthday, Lucia. And second grader Sydney Scott. Happy birthday, Sydney. Looking ahead to Sunday, the 11th, 7th grader, Lila Smith. Happy birthday to Lila. And looking into next week, on Monday, the 12th, Admissions and Development Associate, Mrs. Sillip. Happy birthday to Katie. And on the 13th, Lower School Science Teacher, Mrs. Dadalo. Happy birthday to Mrs. Dadalo. And finally, rounding out our list for this week, on Wednesday the 14th, fifth grader Spencer Dale. Happy birthday, Hurricane Spencer. If you know, you know. Okay, now let's go through a few announcements. Uh, the first is we're having a virtual open house on April 15th, which is next Thursday. That starts at 5.30. If you know someone who might be interested in coming to Montgomery School and they want to attend the open house, have them register at our website. It's montgomeryschool.org. And if you do backslash visit, you'll get to the link. Um, or you can contact the admissions office for more information. Second announcement, you are invited to take a hike. Joining the Montgomery School community for leisurely hikes at Pine Creek Park every Saturday at 9 a.m. For more information and for uh, directions to the park, you can see Schoolhouse News, and that is a parents association, uh, community association project. Next announcement, we are excited very excited to let you know that we'll be streaming this year's benefit fundraiser live on Saturday, April 24th. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of engaging things planned throughout the event. To access the event, you do need a golden entry ticket. For more information on purchasing the ticket and party packs and anything benefit related, please visit our website under the support tab. We hope that you can join us for this engaging event. I know I will be in the live portion of the event, and I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. And finally, it is time for middle school trips. Mr. Roger Regum has been hard at work preparing our middle school trips this year. They're going to be all different shapes and sizes. These are exciting days that are planned for grades 6, 7, and 8. Middle school parents, you should have received an email from Mr. Roger Regum detailing the trip information. If you have any questions, you can reach out to him for more info. All right, now it is time to introduce today's chapel speaker. Ryan Owens is the consummate booster of Montgomery School, and her chapel will tell you all the reasons why. I have been uh, wowed by Ryan at every turn. In this, my first year, she did me the honor of introducing me at uh, my installation ceremony, and little did I know that Ryan would pop up time after time, to speak to the community as student council president, uh, to give a kind word to others on campus. Um, she is energetic. She is hardworking. Um, and she really has been through a lot in her time here as a lifetime Montgomery student. Um, I really enjoy her chapel. And I think you will, too. I think there's something in here for everyone. Um, so take it away, 
Ryan. Thank you, Mr. McManus. I appreciate your kind introduction. Hello, Montgomery School. My name is Ryan Owens, and this is my farewell address. As some of you may or may not know, I've been attending Montgomery School since pre-K, and I'm now proudly serving as Montgomery's beautiful student body president. As any good president, I felt it was only right to leave Montgomery off with a farewell. From the highs to the higher of Montgomery School, the community has always been my second family, my home away from home, my favorite place ever. Anyways, you get the idea. On that note, I obviously have many people and things to thank for making Montgomery such a special place it has been for me. First, let's start off in pre-K. Now, pre-K was 10 years ago, and I did happen to be four years old at the time, so if we're being completely honest with each other, I really don't remember that much except for finger paintings. Though with that being said, I would like to thank whomever helped me paint this quote-unquote masterpiece, but I do have two thank yous. This first one goes out to my class. When I was in pre-K, as many do, I had quite a bit of trouble differentiating my B's from my D's. It was a dark and rainy morning, not afternoon, because I was always too tired to stay for a full day, and we were practicing writing our alphabet. Then was the first time I got it right. I wrote my B's and my D's the right way. It was magical. Everyone was clapping, streamers were flying in the air, I was lifted up as if I were a goddess. Okay, so now that actually happened, but both Ms. Getz and Ms. Norris were very proud of me. The next thank you I have is for my teachers, Ms. Getz, Ms. Norris, and also Ms. Lim, our then music teacher, who helped me find my passion for music. As I still do to this day, when I was four, I loved to sing. And to help me keep that memory forever, my teachers would film me. Now, I do not have access to the video of me singing Single Ladies by Beyonce, but I imagine it went something like this. All the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. Yes, yes, I know, that was beautiful. But thank you to everyone who helped me pass pre-K with flying colors. Next, I would like to thank my friends, teachers, and Ms. Oaks for helping me get through kindergarten. This was the first year I finally started to get used to going to school and starting to get the opportunities all the other lower schoolers got. I remember when we first got to wear uniforms, we were all ecstatic. Now we're all in eighth grade and well, some things have changed. One other thing I remember is getting to participate in the first ever infamous Greek and Roman games. We were all pumped to finally get to participate that year and well, some things never change. In kindergarten, I still sang and danced like my life depended on it, and I was now moving throughout the grades. Ever since kindergarten, the grades have passed me by. I mean, I'm still processing kindergarten as if it happened yesterday. I would also like to pass this piece of advice down to the present kindergartners. Though you may not actually be paying attention to this chapel, I would like you all to know that you should really cherish your time in Montgomery. Live in the moment. It can be really hard to not get caught up in your schoolwork, but sometimes all you need is to take a step back and appreciate your time at Montgomery. Kindergarten felt like it was yesterday for me. Now I'm about to graduate, and though I appreciate my time at Montgomery tremendously, I wish I took even more time to smell the Montgomery roses. Thank you to everyone who helped me get used to Montgomery and set me up to succeed throughout the rest of my time here. In first grade, not much really changed. Though if we're comparing first grade to seventh and eighth, I'm definitely thankful for that. Though I would like to thank Ms. Canals. Ms. Canals, you definitely hold the award for most comfortable chair. This green chair holds a special place in all of our hearts. It was the first chair that actually encouraged me to read some series like The Magic Tree House, which sometimes can be hard to do. Anyone would do anything just to sit in the chair. So Ms. Canals, in a way, you and your very comfortable chair led me on this stage today to read my chapel. Thank you. In second grade, I got the pleasure of having Ms. Oaks again. I spent a lot of my time expanding my knowledge and learning multiplication, which I'm still expanding my knowledge on. But I do have one thank you that goes out to Ms. Dadlow. 
I remember all throughout lower school, all of us students got the pleasure of holding her cockroaches and snake, Luna. I never liked either of these things, but after holding them, I liked them just a bit less. Now, the reason I don't like snakes may be because I didn't try to enjoy myself, but the cockroaches were a bit of a different story. One afternoon, Ms. Dadalo announced that we would be holding the cockroaches, and this wasn't my first time doing so, so I already knew I was not going to enjoy myself. I kept trying to go to the back of the line to get my cockroach, but my time came to get one, and I knew I had to do it. Ms. Dadalo handed me my cockroach, and the first thing it did was run up my sleeve. No, I didn't freak out because I knew that would have been unprofessional. But I did have nightmares for the next month that all happened to have cockroaches in them one way or another. But throughout all of this, I did learn that I can't run away from cockroaches or my fears. I have to face them. And if they run up my sleeve, they run up my sleeve. The point is, I face my fear. And if I didn't, I would have never known if I was some type of cockroach whisperer, which I am not, by the way. But anyways, Ms. Dilo. Thank you for helping me face my fears. In third grade, I finally got the pleasure of having the outdoor classrooms that were not connected to Bell Hall. All I can say is, it really wasn't much different than having a classroom in Bell Hall. But I do think that though it wasn't too impressive, I really did appreciate our time out there. There was no noise coming from Bell Hall to distract us from doing our work. Also, anytime it got too hot outside, we were all allowed to have class on this very stage where there was air conditioning. I vividly remember, it was May 30th, my birthday if anyone was wondering, and it was hot. I had brought in cupcakes and we got to eat them in Bell Hall because we were all dying in our classroom. Though it does not seem like a very big deal to everyone else, that was actually a really fun way to spend my birthday. So thank you to our classrooms that did not have air conditioning, but most importantly, thank you to Bell Hall that did have some cool air to keep us going throughout the day. This now brings us to fourth grade. Fourth grade was actually a pretty good year for me, except for when I broke my foot and had to be in a boot for six weeks, all because of a relay race, which I was the first ever student of the month in karate. And yes, I know, that doesn't really have to do much with the chapel, but I just felt like that was an extra detail I really should include. I would like to th say thank you for Mrs. Clay for putting up with me in my boo. I know I probably tested your patience every now and then, but I appreciate your tolerance to help me through my injury and letting me stay in every recess playing on the smart board. In fourth grade, we also got the pleasure of having our first ever little buddies. Being a big buddy taught me a lot. Some things like kids would rather play red light, green light than read a book, and also how to take care of our little buddies. Now, my heart, of course, still goes out to all of the parents who were the real heroes. But for those half hours we spent with our buddies, we were in charge. We had to make sure the little guys didn't go running off and accidentally hurt themselves or others. And we also had to keep strategizing on how to keep them entertained. Being a big buddy did teach me responsibility. And I would like to thank Mason, my amazing little buddy, who helped shape me into the amazing big buddy I am today. If you couldn't already guess, next up is fifth grade. Now, how do I put this in the best way possible? For me, fifth grade was a mess. In fifth grade, I one day was struck with a random stomach bug that then spread into a six month medical leave. I was not doing well. Everything hurt, I had chronic fatigue, and I could just not catch a break. I was constantly going between different doctors and all I wanted was a break. I eventually got diagnosed with amplified musculoskeletal syndrome, and from then on, I started getting a little bit better day by day. Obviously, from not being in school, my friends thought something was up. So, I would like to thank everyone who wrote me multiple get well cards. I would also like to say thank you to Ms. Batten and Ms. Kelly for helping me academically. Though I was sick, these two would not let me fall behind, which I appreciate tremendously. But through all of this, the people who kept me going the most was my family. They were by my side through my worst days and my best days. I remember through that six month period when I was just going through doctor to doctor telling me I was fine and I should go back to school. My family stuck up for me and helped me get answers. Through this period of my life, I learned many lessons. 
but I mainly learned that though I should and will need to stick up for myself all through my life, my family will have my back. My family taught me to advocate for myself when no one else would. They taught me that I can't give up no matter how hard things get for me. I can't always trust people to be there for me, but one thing I know for sure is my family will always be there for me. So, to my mom, my dad, my sister, and of course, my dog Louie, who is not a shark, by the way, just a little costume. Thank you all for helping me get through my words to become my best. Without you guys, I might not be on the stage today, preparing to leave Montgomery School and getting ready to go to the Hill School. With all of your guys' hard work, I wouldn't be the amazing person I am today. So, thank you. Let's now move on to sixth grade. What I'm most thankful for in this year is the fact that it was normal. Sixth grade was my first year in middle school, and it was my last normal year not only in middle school, but at Montgomery School. I really never thought that my eighth grade year would be in the midst of a pandemic. Crazy, right? Anyways, this was the first, my first year in middle school. We got to go on our DC trip, and we got to do normal middle school things. Though at the time, sixth grade just felt like sixth grade, after living in a pandemic through the rest of my middle school experience, I appreciate sixth grade just a bit more now. I appreciate our last Greek and Roman games, and honestly, just the time we got to spend with each other when we could still read each other's faces. Thank you to my friends and teachers for helping me have the most normal middle school year I've had yet. Seventh grade, oh, seventh grade, how you did us all dirty. It started out great, better than sixth grade even, but in the middle of March, it all changed. As some of you may or may not know, I'm obviously talking about the economic crisis. Oh, yeah, pandemic. Right, so as I was saying before, pandemic it really screwed us all up. We had to transition to online learning. I can't give this amazing chapel to an audience a lockdown, and so, so many other changes. There are many things I didn't get to do last year, but I did get to experience a pandemic, which was pretty cool, but now it's just tiring. The only thing I didn't get to do was thank my teachers and friends for keeping me going through all the hecticness. From dressing up in costumes for online classes to our weekly advisory games, I really appreciate all the hard work everyone put in to keep the mood up. It was rough getting through my seventh grade year online, but with the help of my teachers, it was just a little less rough. This finally brings us to eighth grade. Now, as much as it's been hard working around socially distancing and masks and all, eighth grade has been pretty good to me. I got the pleasure of speaking at Mr. McManus's installation ceremony. I got elected as Montgomery School's president. We put on our first ever Friday Night Lights COVID style, which Bob Kelly helped us out with. I got accepted to my dream school. And now I'm here presenting this amazing chapel to all of you. As much as I would like to dedicate this thank you to Montgomery's teachers again, I have to give it to the lessons I've learned. It has been crucial this year to stay together as a community. With the help of Montgomery School, this year has been maybe one of my favorites. Though we can't all sit together in Bell Hall to watch me perform this amazing chapel or in the lunchroom eating all in the same space, in spirit, we are still together as a community. Sticking together as a community from a distance has been my saving grace this year. With all the support from my friends, family, teachers, faculty, and community, I've been able to grow, not only as a student, but as a person. I've learned new skills and strengths, and I owe it all to you. Dear Montgomery School, thank you. It has been a pleasure to get to know you for the past 13 years of my life. Through my highs and my lows, I could always count on you. Every step I took, you've always been there to cheer me on. Throughout each grade, I've become a better person because of you. I can't even begin to imagine all the great things I will do in life. The places I'll go, the people I'll meet, no matter how far apart we are, I will never forget what you gave to me, an experience. Of course, there are many other things you've given to me, but if I had to choose one thing to keep, it would be my experience. In such a close-knit school, I've learned how to create everlasting bonds that I will miss dearly when I move on. I've learned how to advocate for myself in class. I've learned truth, loyalty, and compassion. 
It's hard for me to think that I will be leaving Montgomery, the place I grew up in, but with your help, I know I'm as ready as I could ever be to move forward. I can't imagine not coming here every day to learn, but you've taught me how to write, to cherish every moment, to read, to face my fears, to be thankful, to be responsible, to advocate for myself, and to, be, and to appreciate the past, present, and future. Of all the farewells I've had to say this year, like saying farewell to our class trips or close contact, Montgomery, you will be the hardest. So from my head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes, thank you. Farewell, Ryan Owens.